the Alpha 10 and ground for it. The Alpha 10 and uh, In one year, air traffic controllers handled the takeoff and landing of more than 64 million flights. Air traffic controllers have one of the most demanding jobs in the world with high levels of responsibility and inherent stress due to the nature of the position. One mistake or moment of forgetfulness by the controller can mean disaster. High levels of stress impair judgment, while low levels of alertness decrease awareness. Therefore, it would be beneficial for air traffic controllers to maintain a more consistent level of concentration. You have a, a collection of air traffic controllers, and they're together sharing the responsibility of safely directing planes down to the ground. At any given moment, of course, one workload or one uh, air traffic controller may be under a state of extremely high cognitive workload, whereas another has very low cognitive workload. Uh, could be there might be other ways to figure this out, uh, their task load, but in reality, people have different abilities to deal with different amounts of information. So what you'd really want is a method of knowing the individual cognitive workloads of each one of these air traffic controllers, and you delegate the task based on everybody's workload so that everyone has the optimal amount. We want a way to monitor someone's cognitive workload, or in other words, their concentration level, and use this information to improve their life. Our goal is to accomplish both of these. We aim to design and build a device that measures your cognitive workload using near-infrared spectroscopy, as well as to develop software that uses these measurements to modify your interaction with the environment. Near-infrared spectroscopy, or NIRS, is a non-invasive medical imaging technique in which we shine light at specific frequencies into the prefrontal cortex and measure the amount of light that's absorbed by hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a protein that transports oxygen in the blood. Therefore, using these measurements, we can estimate the oxygen concentrations in the brain. Um, so what we do is we see trends in brain activation. So as a part of the brain becomes more active, it calls for more oxygen, and we can measure these changes in the blood. So it's these slow changes, uh, but we can see trends, and we do see different patterns uh, when the users are performing different activities. Um, so two other sensing technologies that are very popular are EEG and fMRI. EEG measures electrical activity in the brain, um, so you see these, these fast changes sort of when the user responds to a stimulus. Um, but it's sort of a big setup. There's a lot of gel involved, uh, a lot of time to set up. Um, fMRI, the user has to stay inside a big metal tube. It's very expensive. Uh, we're measuring the same signal that the fMRI is, but in, we're only getting one part of the brain. NIRS is highly scalable because at the fundamental level, it only requires a light source and a detector to monitor these signals. Although the existing NIRS technology is being used to conduct these human-computer interaction experiments, it remains large and immobile. Therefore, our piece of the project is to build a wireless device that is significantly smaller than current products and can be worn comfortably on the forehead. Over the past year, we've gone through several phases of development. We began by testing the functionality of the device using breadboard components and LEDs as light sources. After successful demonstration of our initial phase, we proceeded to test on a protoboard and then on a printed circuit board using red and infrared lasers. We've worked through a number of iterations and currently have a prototype smaller than a business card. Our next step is to complete evaluation and testing of the device. Um, so one of our new um, application domains is for Google Glass. So basically Google Glass has this ability to give uh, the user a ton of information all the time. Uh, but one thing that we want to do is sort of cater to the user. Um, so we can put the sensor right above the glass, so it's not. We can put the sensor right above the glass, so it's not really intrusive because you already have something on your forehead. And when we detect these um, suboptimal states of high workload, uh, we can sort of take away some of the notifications. So we can, we can sort of mess with when we're giving the user this information. Um, so we built an engine where uh, the user is guiding multiple UAVs on manned aerial vehicles, and they're sort of doing an air traffic control task. They're guiding. Uh, these, these vehicles around obstacles to targets. And when we see sort of long periods of low workload, so we think that the user is entering a state of boredom, we'll give them more planes. And when we see that they have uh, long periods of high workload, so they're sort of stressed, they're, they're doing too much, they might reach a state of anxiety, uh, we'll remove some of the planes. And from that, we notice that we can keep them in sort of an optimal work, 
work zone and we see that they um, have less errors and they notice when planes are about to hit obstacles um, more often. And our hope is that eventually the signal that they get from their teeny tiny device is going to be as good as this, the, the signal that we get from our large, bulky stationary device. And I think at that point we can really put together a good case to Google to say like, hey, buy us for half a billion dollars and integrate this with Google Glass.